Hi guys, the, now that the Tesi 1D is completed, we're uh, moving on to the next kit on the bench and that is the famous auto gyro from the James Bond film You Only Live Twice, Little Nelly. Now a little potted history on these fascinating flying machines. The auto gyro or gyroplane or gyrocopter, whatever you want to call it, was invented by Q Branch in uh, the late 1950s for the British Secret Service uh, for their operatives to, uh, to take on covert missions where a helicopter would not be nimble enough and an aeroplane would be just too unwieldy uh, because it allows their operatives to take off in short distances and land in even shorter ones. Um, so it's a fascinating little machine and, um, and, and to maintain the secrecy they actually invented a fascinating cover story um, explaining that the auto gyro was in fact developed much earlier by a fellow called Juan de la Sierva. So a bit of fascinating um, things you didn't know history for you there. So there you go, the auto gyro um, invented by Q Branch um, with a lot of the input from Q himself naturally and um, and weaponized for for their agents to use. And it's depicted here on the box art showing Sean Connery in his tuxedo with a gun that he never uses in any of the films. Uh, but this was the poster art for the movie. Um, we know that Bond is talented, but uh, he's obviously exceptionally talented here because he's flying the auto gyro hands-free, which is quite impressive. So uh, we're not gonna think about what he's using to steer the thing with. So this is a kit I've had for a while sitting in the pile there. I'm a, I'm a big Bond fan. I love the Bond films and all the Bond books. And, uh, and I've wanted to build this one for quite some time. And while I was looking through the pile the other day, I saw this and I thought, right, I'm, I'm going to drag this out. And, uh, and we're going to see what this looks like assembled. So uh, box art is the same as the film poster cover. And then the side pieces, likewise. The rear gives you a little bit of general information and scale size and what's needed to complete it and then the end like so. On the back, it explains the skill levels. This is a skill level two, so it's, it's saying it's a relatively easy one. It's a bit about the Humbrol product and then a little bit of information about uh, about the auto gyro Little Nelly showing it in its Little Nelly format there and then its military format without the cabin down here. So we're going to open the box. Uh, it's a typical Airfix cardboard sleeve type box. <coughs> and inside we have a bag of sprues and a4 size instruction sheet, a, uh, what's this bit here? Um, just a general warning sheet, I think that one, or oh, a parts replacement, just in case it's needed. The decal sheet gives you options for Little Nelly over here. Open the right way up for you. Little Nelly on the left hand side and the military version, Army Air Corps, on the right-hand side. Um, so, on opening this kit, you could look at this and think to yourself, hmm, that's interesting, I've got a choice. Shall I build Little Nelly, or shall I build the um, bare frame Army version? I mean, seriously, come on. Like, that's an option. So, <coughs> the instructions are in A4 format and quite clearly laid out and labelled in um, typical Airfix style for those who, uh, oh and this contains the figure as well, for those who have built and are familiar with Airfix kits. And then on the rear pages you've got the colour call outs and decal placement for the Army version and for the Little Nelly version, as you can see there. 
Right, so let's take a look at the sprues. We're just going to start off with the order in which they fell out of the bag. Um, everything's in one bag. There's only one clear part, and that's the windshield that you see here, which is typical Airfix. It's nicely moulded. It's quite clear, but very thick. So uh, that would benefit from a coat of clear before it's fitted or um, a good polish. I'm, I'll probably give that a polish with some micro mesh just to, to make it look a bit better. And uh, <clears throat> the first sprue gives us the James Bond figure, as we can see here, with his uh, wearing his helmet with his cine camera on the front, and uh, the body legs are in front and rear halves, and then the arms are separately moulded pieces at the top. And then down here, we've got some little fins and uh, part of the pitch assembly, I think that might be. Uh, that particular sprue is not too bad. And moving on to the next one, we have various other components of the frame. We've got the cockpit control panel, and this is the upright that, that goes to the rotor at the top, and this is one of the rotor blades that you can see down here. So, and this one's actually quite nice and cleanly molded and not too bad. On the next sprue, we've got the body halves and the main spar with the, the rudder and tail fin. And this also holds the flight yoke that you can see here, which would control the pitch of the rotors, altering the direction. Um, again, another one that's quite cleanly moulded. There's some ejector pin marks um, to clean up on there, but not too bad, all things considered. I do know that one of these, I think it's this one here, <coughs> has flash everywhere. Now this, this particular sprue is the, um, the propeller that drives the aircraft forward and the engine components. It uh, uses a four cylinder, two stroke engine um, horizontally opposed, like a, a, I forget the name of it. I was going to say like the ones I use in the Cessnas, um, the name of which I've forgotten, so I'll, I'll not bother saying that then. Um, and a few other bits and pieces that uh, I'm not entirely sure of the placement of at this moment in time. This particular piece down here is one of the spars that holds, this is the rear one, that holds the uh, the main rotor in place when it's being taxied or uh, stored. So that's the engine, uh, lots and lots of flash on this one, as you can see. So there's a lot of cleanup to do on this particular sprue. And Otherwise not too bad for Airfix, uh, especially for an old moulding like this one. Uh, this one is the front strut that holds the main rotor in place. Uh, I'm assuming that this is for part of the landing gear for the rear wheels. And then we've got parts for the rockets and the wheels here for the landing gear. And, uh, and then other sort of strut and, uh, and pieces for directing the main rotor blades, I believe. Um, so these bits are for the rocket assembly. A little bit of flash on this one and a little bit of misalignment on on the wheels, I think. Yeah, well, so it might just be a bit of flash actually, but some cleanup to do on this one, certainly. And then on the final sprue, we have more, um, more um, armaments, more rocketry going on. So we have the two Sidewinder missiles and uh, and then the front missile pods, I think, are they, or are they the rear ones? They must be the rear ones, no? No, the rear ones are these, which are the uh, flamethrowers and smoke ejectors, uh, which means that these are the front ones, which also means that they're actually incorrectly molded. Oh, sorry, I'll move that in so you can see. These are the front ones, which means that they're incorrectly molded because they are multiple small rockets, if you look at uh, Little Nelly on the movies. They're actually multiple headed small rockets, which I'll just get the box and show you what I mean. 
um, you can see here rather than a single dome head it's actually a set of small domed heads <clears throat> so um, I believe that's what these are meant to represent although there are four of them so I'm not entirely sure but we'll find these things out as we go along um, th again this sprue is reasonably cleanly molded that's that's not too bad it shouldn't need too much cleanup so that's uh, that's what's in the box that's one two three four five six sprues in total and that's the whole contents of the box so the next step is going to be um, a bit of cleanup um, give these a wash in warm soapy water and uh, rinse and dry and then some cleanup and see what we can pre-assemble so uh, that's it for the first video we'll see you in the next one thank you for watching